And we are back. We got a four game slate to talk about here. Welcome, guys. My name is DK. We'll be breaking down the four game NBA DFS slate in this video. Uh, I also cover content for NFL Daily Fantasy Sports. If you guys are playing the showdown slate tomorrow with the Titans and Steelers, I broke that one down. It is ugly, but again, there's money to be made. I also cover content for player, pro- player prop sites like Price Picks, Underdog, Parlay, Play. Guys, if you're not on Prize Picks, you can use the code DKDFS for a 100% match up to $100. It is linked down below. But basically, it's a player prop site. You rebuild out slips of player props, two, three, four, five, up to six. And you can up to 25x your money. I've been on Prize Picks for years now, having a lot of fun, making a lot of money. So if you guys are not on uh, Prize Picks, again, go check it out. Would highly recommend it. And if you're looking for more content uh, for player prop stuff or DFS, you can check out my Patreon linked down below. Okay, so let's recap everything from tonight to making this video at about 9.30 p.m. So the late games are still going on, but got to talk about this, man. Like, come on. This is just this had me sick. This had me sick. Uh, Jeremy Grant had 25 PRA for the longest time in the fourth and just didn't do anything. Looked to me. Uh, I don't think Bain's going to hit either, but still would have been 4-1 and one if Grant could have hit. Uh, but no, got the hooks. Looking like it's going to be a 3-2 and two day. Uh, but yeah, man, that hook was brutal for Jeremy Grant. Yaka Pertle hit easily. We had his fantasy score and his PRA over. That hit very, very easily. And then for DFS, so this is my lineup last night. And I talked about this a bit uh, on Patreon as well, how I moved some stuff around once the Cavs uh, guys busted. And you, again, you have to late swap. Uh, NBA late swap is super, super important. So uh, even though Mitchell and Struess were very, very popular, I knew I had to take some shots and some lower own options. So I pivoted, moved some stuff around, and uh, played a couple low on guys in Wambayama and in Sohan. And I ate what I thought would be chalk with the Suns guards in Gordon, Grace, and Allen. They surprisingly were not chalk, which I don't know how. Like, again, that I was talking about. I was like, how was Gordon and Grace and Allen only 20% on each? Uh, my boy Nurkic had a really good game, and the Norm Powell rounded out the lineup. So it was a really gross slate the other day, but I ended up 4Xing. A slate tonight, probably not going to cash unless D goes crazy there in the late game. Uh, but yeah, McCollum was a guy I was super high on once we got the Ingram news. Surprise how, you know, he's only 30% owned. Uh, the next, the Nets guys kind of killed me. Ben Simmons went to the locker room. Cam Thomas shot four of 97 from the field. So those guys killed me. Brogdon was solid. Bagley was okay. Shingun was okay. Jim Williams is okay. But uh, yeah, the killers for me here were the two Nets who uh were both letdowns uh they were very shorthanded but again simmons locker room camp thomas awful shooting that is what it is so that's the recap of everything i'm looking good in the late slate we'll see how that goes but that's the recap of everything hope you guys had a good night and uh yeah let's talk about this four game slate so we'll start off with toronto and you guys know what i'm gonna say here right we've been on him since the beginning of the year and he continues to smash. The price is continuing to go up, but I still think he's firmly in play. He, right now, Scotty Barnes is their best player for Toronto. He's their go-to guy. And the field, Vegas, has still not recognized it, right? So I, once again, really like Scotty Barnes at this price point. I prefer him to Siakam, who's been quiet this year. Now, I'm not saying you can't play Siakam, but it's weird with those two being so close in price. Yeah, I, I do prefer Scotty Barnes to Siakam. Dennis Schroeder has also played very well to start the year for, for the Raptors. He has the ball in his hands a ton. I want to say he went for double-digit assists once again. So a guy that has a relatively high floor should play 30-plus minutes. The Raptors are running pretty tight rotation. I think Schroeder's pretty safe. Now, Achua, I don't think will play. It's a back-to-back, so that should be more minutes for Pirtle. The issue here now is the matchup, right? I was really high in Pirtle, and I took his over PRA today because I wasn't really worried about foul trouble. Well, now look at who is he going to be matched up against. Joel Embiid. So there's a lot more risk with Pirtle. But if you told me for sure that he stayed out of foul trouble and played close to 30 minutes, yeah, he is too cheap. But I am a bit worried about the foul trouble. The other wings, OG, Gary Trent off the bench, are kind of filler plays for me. If you land on those guys, sure. Uh, Brady Dick's getting some minutes, I think. Don't think it's necessary to go to him on this slate, but he'll be in the rotation my boy Boucher, I think, is interesting on the slate, especially if Achua is out, because if Pirtle gets in foul trouble, which is somewhat likely, Boucher is a guy that will benefit, and we know he's a good point per minute guy, so he is intriguing to me at a sub-4K price point. He'll be in the rotation, assuming Achua is out, and again, if something happens to Pirtle, you should see more minutes for, uh, for Boucher. All right, Philadelphia. So Philadelphia, weird. Uh, so no Batum, but the newly traded Covington, 
AJ Martin and Marcus Morris, it sounds like they'll be available. Uh, again, we'll get some clarity on the situation tomorrow, but they said they're going to start Ubre for the, in the short term for now. So you're going to have the starting lineup of Maxi Melton, Ubre Harris, and Joel Embiid. Uh, yeah, Embiid at 11.5. If you have the salary for him, I'm not going to say no. I just don't love the price point now. He feels priced about right. Maxi 8.4K. Bill feels a little underpriced for, for his role, right? He is dominating usage right now with, with James Harden out of town, getting a ton of shots up, having the ball in his hands a ton, and he's rebounding the ball really well too. So I still like Maxi. The mid-range guys, Harris, Ubre, and Melton all look pretty similar to me. I think Harris feels priced about right. Ubre and Melton in the 5K range, I think are both solid options. Uh, I don't think I'm going to like jam them in, but I do think maybe a little bit underpriced for those two guys. And the bench rotation, again, you're going to see Pat Bev, you're going to see Paul Reed playing the back of five. I don't know like what the minutes are going to look like for the newly traded guys, Covington, Marcus Morris, AJ Martin. So hopefully we'll get some sort of clarity on that for the 76ers. All right, Detroit, New Orleans. So this is one of my favorite games to target on the slate for Detroit. Uh, Jalen Duran, I don't think he'll play. It was a back-to-back and he sat uh, today. So I assume he'll be out again. And then I feel bad if anyone had Burks today. You got, you got, we had two guys get late scratched today after lock. Alec Burks and then Torian Prince in the late game. So if you had either of those guys, I feel really bad for you because that is just really, really unlucky. Um, but yeah, with Jalen Duran out, you got Marvin Bagley moving in the starting lineup. But Bagley starts again. I really like him for value. He started off strong, kind of cooled off there in the second half. But we know Bagley is a good point per minute guy. And then Wiseman will get some backup center minutes. He got in massive foul trouble, so barely played in the first half. You did see some small ball Isaiah Stewart as well, which I think they could do again tomorrow. So that is, you know, somewhat of a risk with a guy like Wiseman. But like a min price Wiseman, if you told me he played like 15, 20 minutes, I would have a lot of interest in him. Uh, now the guards, Cade, again, he's, he's one of those guys, young guys, kind of very up and down, right? He's been boomer bust this year. He had a good game last game, but it's kind of been up and down for him, right? So I like his ceiling. But he's also very foul prone. Uh, yeah, definitely in play for tournaments. I think Asura Thompson and Isaiah Stewart are pretty good options in the mid-range. Thompson should see low 30s minutes, as should Stewart. Uh, if you think that uh they're not, if you don't think the Pistons don't play Wiseman a ton, you want to have a bit more interest in Stewart, who would play some backup five then in that scenario. Ivy uh, off the bench, if there's no Alec Burks, I think is a little bit interesting. Probably not gonna get to Killing Hayes. And uh yeah, you did see some sa- uh, um did see some Marcus Sasser in their rotation uh, at his price point. Mm, don't love it, but I guess you can take a shot at him for GPPs. Let's move on to New Orleans. So New Orleans is a team I'm going to probably will be my favorite team if Ingram's out again. Uh, Zion, CJ, JV, Herb Jones, Hawkins, Dyson Daniels all look good. Um, if there's no Ingram, you're going to get Hawkins in the starting lineup. Hawkins has played big minutes, and he's getting a lot of shots up. So I think he would look really good for value. CJ would probably be a top overall play. He had a big game tonight. Uh, and yeah, the price is too cheap uh, if there's no Ingram. Dion also had closer triple-double. I think he's a decent spend up at the top. JV didn't play a ton, but in 21 Mets, he was productive. Now, against this Detroit front court, maybe he could play a bit more, right? Against Detroit, who plays, you know, traditional big. So yeah, JV has a pretty high ceiling if he gets, you know, close to 30 minutes. Herbert Jones, I think, is pretty safe, assuming he stays out of foul trouble. I mean, yeah, Hawkins should start. I think he's a good value. Dyson Daniels should play some Mets off the bench. If you think they kind of take it easy on the Mets for JV, you want to have some interest in a guy like Larry Nance, who's playing the backup five. Um, so I think he is viable if you think they limit minutes on JV. Don't think I get to anyone else, though, on the Pelicans. And then if Ingram plays, kind of downgrade to everyone. Hawkins moves to the bench. The other starters don't look as good. So the Ingram news is huge. Orlando and Utah, it's basically just a broken record for me for the Magic. When this team's fully healthy, I don't know, like... All the main guys feel maybe a little bit underpriced. Paolo, 7'3", Franz, 6'7", Carter, 5'7", Fultz, 5'5". The two guards, Anthony, 5'2", and Suggs, 5K. Like, yeah, they all feel maybe a little bit too cheap, but I'm not going to, like, prioritize any of these guys. Uh, Paolo's had a slow start to the year, but the price has dropped on him. In a competitive game, I would expect low to mid-30s minutes. Franz Wagner, 6'7", he should see low to mid-30s minutes. He's been pretty consistent. Carter Jr. is not at the best start either, but his minutes have been relatively secure. The minutes have ticked up in Markel Fultz recently, 33 and 32 minutes, something to note there. Anthony Suggs are, again, okay options. Off the bench, Mo Wagner will back up. Carter Jr., he's a good point-per-minute guy. He'll play whatever one of Carter Jr. does not play. Gary Harris, Isaac Ingles will round out the rotation. Gary Harris has played well off the bench at about 20 minutes. 
But I don't know if he's going to continue to shoot this well. You know, 5 of 8, 6 of 6, 3 of 5. Uh, so, yeah, that's the magic. Again, pretty boring team. But, like, you get to these guys. They're just more filler plays for me. For the Jazz, uh, Laurie Markin is 9K. That feels priced about right. But in a competitive game, I would expect mid-30s minutes from him. Kessler's been very, very up and down. So he's fine for tournaments. But again, the minutes have not been great. John Collins has been pretty consistent. I think he's safe, should see around 30 minutes. Jordan Clarkson been a bit up and down, but the minutes have been there. And I like the price point for him. He's going to chuck when he's out there. So uh, yeah, I think I think Clarkson's definitely underpriced. Olenek will play some backup five. If you think Kessler gets limited, you could look to Olenek. THT probably plays mid-20s minutes, reasonable. You're going to see some Keontae George, my boy. You're going to see Sexton. You're going to see Dunn. You're going to see Akbachi in the rotation. Nothing else really standing out to me for the Jazz. Final game here, Spurs and Suns. So for the Spurs, you guys know what I'm going to say about rookie Wembayama, right? Wide range outcomes. Foul prone. Minutes have not been amazing on him, but still a guy that has a ceiling. So I'm interested in him for tournaments. Once again, I expect him to be low owned. I think Vassell and Keldon are pretty solid options. Both had good games last game. You saw 36 minutes for Vassell. Keldon Johnson saw 33 minutes. They're both... Fine options in the mid-range. I think Zach Collins is a guy that I do like once again. I only played 27 minutes. Uh, that was a little bit concerning because previous games and competitive games, he was seeing 30-plus. But we know Zach Collins is over a fantasy point-per-minute guy. Jeremy Sohan also dealt some foul trouble. Still played 30 minutes. I think he's pretty safe. You know, he's their point guard right now. Trey Jones is coming off the bench and seeing decent minutes. I think he's an okay tournament play. Don't know if it's necessary to, to get to anyone else. I mean, I'll mention Shetty, who should see high teens minutes off the bench. He's averaging like 15 to 20 fancy points a game. I think it's reasonable value. Bassey is going to play the backup five. He's a good point per minute guy. 3.2K on a small slate. Yeah, I think you got to have a little bit of interest. And finally, the Suns. So the Suns, it really just comes down to Booker. Booker changes absolutely everything for this team, for what I want to do. So if Booker is out once again, then I'm really high in the Suns. Uh, Kevin Durant would be a good spend up. I know he was a lot down last game, but still a guy without, if there's no Booker and no Beal, the clear go-to guy. Nurkic would see around 30 minutes. Uh, probably see a bit more usage if there's no Booker, but a lot of these guards benefit. Gordon should see 30 plus minutes. Grayson Allen should see 30 plus minutes. Kogi at 4-5 should see good minutes. Uh, Goodwin got limited last game, but you know he had played previously you know, 30 and 25 minutes, so... There would be a lot to like here from the Suns if Booker is out. If Booker is in, not that much. I think KD would be a bit overpriced. I think Nurkic would feel priced about right. I think Gordon, Grayson Allen would feel priced about right. Maybe a little overpriced. Goodwin would be overpriced. I don't think I would play him with Booker back. Ogie would feel priced about right. So what I want to do with the Suns team completely depends on Booker. And the tricky part here is it's the late game, right? It's a standalone late game. So we may or may not get Booker news before lock. Uh, so then it comes down to, all right, well, how do you want to play it? Maybe you, you know, have some swaps, like a 2v2, you know, have, oh, I don't know, KD and Akogi, and then if Booker gets rolled in, you can go to, like, two Spurs or something, right? So I feel like that's, you're going to have to have some backup plans here from the Suns if we do not get uh, the Booker news before. All right, so that'll wrap it up for the video, guys. Uh, keep an eye out for, I'll try to get a price picks video up tonight as well. Um, but yeah, if you guys do enjoy this, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, the support has been crazy, uh, really been, uh, been growing a lot on YouTube. So can't thank you guys enough for continuing to watch, continuing to like, uh, again, greatly, greatly appreciate it. But good luck tomorrow and we'll see you guys in the next video.